all right uh, very good morning uh, very good evening everyone uh, wherever you are from uh, we already passed 5 minutes uh, good to start it right uh, first of all uh, welcome to this uh, oracle 19c rack administration workshop the reason being this course is called as a workshop each and every topic or the concept whatever we are going to discuss here will be in 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 example with the real time world or the real time customer facing examples and everything will be demonstrated live in the lab and at the same time you will be practicing the same concept or the same commands in your own lab so that rather than it's being a just a course it will be a workshop where myself along with you together both are practicing side by side so that everyone will get a hands on experience right that's where you know we call it as a workshop rather than the course because it's all more of example towards a real time practical uh, world with a real time customer facing examples and a live demonstration on the lab right having said that uh, i can quickly post it over here what are the topics or the content we are going to talk about we'll start with the introduction about me how my journey started and what are the expertise i'm having it followed by course curriculum and followed by course duration and timings and followed by how you can access the course materials course content and other things and how the classes are conducted and uh, how the communication is going to happens once the classes are uh, commenced and what are the prerequisites and these are related to course and how we can get started or get uh, begin with this course and followed by some of the important topics related to rack we are going to discuss today and tomorrow whatever the mentioned over here rack architecture rack networking standalone versus rack pros and cons and installation types with respect to standalone and rack and cluster startup sequences like process daemon services and rack file systems cid files right so we'll talk about that little bit later but let's discuss this important topics and uh, during this course of uh, two days today and tomorrow whatever these demo classes are conducting uh, you are all allowed to unmute yourself and ask the questions if you have it anything while i'm explaining or while i'm going through all this content uh, if you get any questions or queries feel free to unmute yourself and post it or ask here i'm happy to answer that and at the same time uh, the zoom chat is already opened and if you are not able to unmute and you can post your questions over here i'll be monitoring this chat i can happy to take that questions and answer right let's quickly talk about uh, about me uh, i'm having uh, around 15 years of experience in this it industry um immediate after my graduation i started my career with iget global solutions as a junior dba and that's where my career started in it journey and where i worked for some of the retail customers and after that i worked for oracle india where i worked as a senior oracle dba and after that i worked for exa group of companies followed by wipro and followed by some of the onsite opportunities some of the migration projects and some of the um, retail industries some of them e commerce some of them are insurance sector and some of them are finance sector i worked from various uh, six to seven companies so far uh, in the span of this 15 years uh, around 3 to 4 years of experience in each of these organization and all together this 15 years of experience uh, i got a chance to work on various oracle products starting with this oracle database rack expert golden gate support and oracle ebs support and oracle obi support and also i got a chance to work on oracle engineering systems so engineering systems are like you no know, advanced machines provided by oracle like exadata 
or your Varacal supercluster or Varacal Exalogic, Varacal Oda, Varacal Data Appliances, and Varacal GFS, Zero Data Loss Appliances. So these are Varacal engineering systems. We call it as engineering systems. I got a chance to work on these areas. I worked and then uh, I implemented. I uh, also did a patching, upgradation, migration, and all those things. And along with this Oracle product, like you know, I almost knows around more than 20 plus Oracle product. As I said, like Oracle database rack, data guard, golden gate, and Oracle engineering system, EBS. And these are like applications said Oracle EBS, Oracle OBI, PeopleSoft, Soha, and followed by engineering system, Exadata, Exalogic, Supercluster, ODA, GFS. So almost around, I got a chance to work on 20 plus engineering system and I worked all this entire 25 years, sorry, 15 years, all this Oracle domains. And having said that, am I limited my knowledge with this Oracle product? No, I also learned so many other technologies and also I worked on other database products. I worked for IBM DB2 and also worked in SAP HANA, SAP HANA database and also worked on Microsoft MS SQLs and also worked on PostgreSQLs and MySQLs. And these are my other secondary database skills. And again, am I limited my knowledge with this database technology itself? No, because many, many, many of students or many of friends will always used to discuss cloud is booming and is it worth you know, expanding our knowledge into cloud? or the DevOps is booming, is it worth expanding our knowledge in DevOps? It's all depending upon how much capability and how much interest you have it. Similarly, I did not limited my knowledge with this database technologies. I also worked on, also got a knowledge on this other technologies like DevOps as well as uh, cloud because I learned all the Oracle cloud and also certified with that all the Oracle cloud. And also I worked on Azure and AWS. So that is my cloud knowledge. I also work and also certified in Azure and cloud. And also I worked on your, uh, these DevOps. I'm good at Kubernetes. I'm good at Terraform, right? These are like, you know, good at your DevOps. Whenever like you worked on DevOps, like your Docker's Kubernetes and other things. So that will help you for you know, automation that will help you for, you know, when you're working as an infrastructure lead. So this uh, DevOps and cloud technologies will very, very mandatory when you work as a, you know, infrastructure lead or the solution architect or the database architect, right? So these are all my uh, areas of expertise. What I'm trying to say, I did not limited my knowledge only to this Oracle product or I did not limited my knowledge only to this database technologies. I learned along with the Oracle product. I also learned the other products like Informatica admin. I worked as an Informatica admin for one of the customer where we built entire data center, entire their entire database flow or database architecture or entire their uh, data modeling. Everything will be built from the scratch. That is one of the insurance sector. Uh, in in Saudi Arabia, so we went on site and we built entire their infrastructure from the scratch. That is one of the major project what we did it uh, in my career, building entire infrastructure from the scratch and designing their databases from the scratch. That is one of the major project what we did it for that incident sector. And one more other product project what I did it in my career is the entire data center migration. Again, that is for insurance sector. We did the entire data entire data center migration from you know, New Jersey, like Washington DC to New Jersey. So that is entire data center migration. That is again insurance sector having EBS and OBI, PeopleSoft and Soha. So they're having uh, heavily relied on this Oracle applications. EBS, OBI, people suffer and so on, and including Exata servers. So we did the entire data center migration. These are like two major uh, project what we accomplished in my uh, entire this 15 years of career. 
and along with that uh, so many other small small projects like you know upgradation migration patching you know i've did it hundreds of patchings migration upgradations more than 100 200 database upgradation database migration patchings all this like uh, day to day activity including you know rack setup installation configuration these are like common activities for me and what are the major if somebody asks what are the major activities i performed in my career the data center built from the scratch and data center migration very very challenging projects so that is that's all about me like you know if you allow me i can talk full day but uh, yeah i just limit myself so that is about me in short having this 15 years of experience got a chance to work on various organizations and various domains like banking insurance and e-commerce all these three areas i got a chance to work with the various uh, organization or various clients and i did not limited myself with oracle product only i also learned other products other than oracle and i i did not limited my knowledge only to the database technologies i also learned a cloud also a cloud and also certified in that i also learned some of the devops skills and also using it for my automation right that is about me all right so moving ahead uh, if no questions again as i said you are allowed to unmute yourself and stop me and ask any questions or you can post your questions on your on the zoom chat here all right if no questions let's move on to the second topic that is about the course curriculum very important right because we are all here to know this particular rack course and understand what i'm going to teach and how i'm going to teach and what are the course curriculum so knowing about the course curriculum course duration is very important right let's quickly go here i already said all of these details in our social media platform again i'm going to reiterate so these are the two demo classes today and tomorrow first july and second july so these are going to be first july and second july two demo classes and we're going to just talk about uh, some generic information right so these are like uh, demo classes and again this is a zoom link what we're using it for these demo classes right let's quickly go to this course curriculum now right so this is the course curriculum uh, i already opened here what are this course curriculum included let first talk about course curriculum and then we'll talk about this important keynotes about this course right what are this course curriculum what this exactly course contains and what is not included so we'll start with the introduction about clusterware because we need to first uh, understand or do a strong foundation in the architecture part because once you're stronger once you understand the the clusterware concept and drag architecture rack networking that is your foundation and whatever you're going to learn whatever you're going to support as a rack administrator or rack administrator for any client your basic understanding basic foundation is very important your clusterware understanding rack architecture and rack networking these three are very very important we'll start with the this two topics very basic clusterware understanding and rack architecture right once we understand about this rack architecture networking clusterware we'll start with the rack setup we'll start with the first linux installation linux setup we're going to do two node rack installation and we'll start with the linux setup in our individual laptop and once the linux installation is done we'll do a network configuration because when you work as a rack there will be too much of networking involved in that you will get your public ips private ips scan ips vips and you get private network and public network and what are these how we can configure what are the dns setup so we'll start with the configuration of those network setups and followed by installation and configuration of a two node rack cluster we'll do a two node rack cluster once the rack cluster is installed we're going to install oracle home we're going to install two node oracle home installation 
and followed by you are going to create some shared disks and the shared disk groups so we're going to create multiple disk groups data reco fra archive we're going to create multiple disk groups and we're going to use those disk groups for my rack database installation so this is all about core whatever the chapter one to eight is all about the basic foundation strong understanding of rack architecture clusterware architecture and rack networking and your clusterware installation your oracle home installation and creation of various disk groups and followed by finally installation of rack database so that is your a strong foundation once you thorough with this one to seven or one to eight chapters and once you are able to install freely without any issues so that will make you more confidence and further you can support any kind of a work on this rack right and followed by asm understanding when you start with this rack once you start with your clusterware asm is mandatory asm is must so we'll start with understanding asm architecture and asm administration managing the disk groups give me a second guys here right so this chapter number 9 and 10 is all about asm we'll go end to end about asm and its architecture and internal understanding how my database are going to store the data files in the asm storage asm again stands for automatic storage management it's a storage provided by storage concept provided by oracle just to eliminate dependency on your storage admin we no need to depend upon storage admin anymore we can provision our own disk groups we can increase we can decrease our own uh, disk groups whenever there's a need for my database storage so we'll try to understand end to end about asm architecture and managing the disk groups so when you talk about disk groups there is again so much of concept in the disk groups how we can create a disk groups with a command line with a gui mode and what are the redundancies we have a normal we have a high and external and like two copies three copies and no mirroring so and the striping there so many concept will come over asm so we'll understand end to end about asm here in the chapter number 9 and 10 right again if you talk about the chapter number 11 12 and 11 and 12 is a purely about clusterware all the clusterware services crs ctl versus srs ctl and how my cluster is going to start the cluster startup sequence i'm not talking about any database here it's all about clusterware your grid infrastructure so how your cluster is formed what are the major core component clusterware services your olr hosting hosting disk your ocr and your vip scan ips public ips and how i can use srs ctl crs ctl how i can reboot my cluster nodes how i can reboot my cluster service on one node and all node uh, all will talk about clusterware related activities here and here in the chapter number 13 it's all about a database administration once you understand about the clusterware administration we'll talk about database administration so how my database is residing under this cluster and where are my data files where are my redo logs where are my sp file where are my password file where are my archive log file where are my control file right so on which disk group they are residing and how i can add this how i can create a new redo log file how i can create a new sp file how i can create a new data file how i can create a new control file so it's all about managing your database we can use sru ctl to manage database and we'll understand their file system and where they resides and again this chapter number 14 is about backups and recoveries how i can take this rack database backup if it's a two node rack or four node rack where i'm going to take a backup on node 1 node 2 node 3 node 4 can i split all my channels across all the nodes how i can improve my backup performance and recovery performance that is for your rack database how the backups and restore recovery works for the rack 
and chapter number 15 again very important when you start working on this rack you will get lots of listeners few of them i listed over here your asm listener your scan listener your database listener your remote listener local listener and your asm net listener and how this connection works why these many listeners are needed and how if clients want to connect how that connection flow will work how this scan will do a load balancing and what is the use of asm listener what is the use of scan listener what's the use of database listener client has to use which listener which tns how that connections are going and are this all listeners are involved in the connection or only one listener is more than enough so we'll understand each and every concept about the listener how the connection will work and then once you understand about the listener then you will understand oh, how that client connection is going to work and what tns entries i need to give it to client is it a scan is it a database listener or is it a asm listener or am i going to give vip details or the public ip details or the scan ip details so all those concept will understand on the listener and chapter number 16 is about multi tenant architecture with respect to rack so whatever this chapter what i'm talking about it's all about rack nothing about stand alone here right again stand alone on rack two important concepts stand alone is a single node and that's a core basic foundation or basic architecture for database and rack is advanced so it's all about what i was talking here is about rack so this multi tenant architecture with respect to rack it's very very important for dbas to learn this multi tenant architecture because when you install any database whether it's a stand alone or rack as of 19c when you were trying to create or install a database it's going to ask you two option normal database right normal database when you are trying to create a database in 19c it don't ask you two option whether you want to create a normal database it's a general architecture so far whatever we learned or we'll going to ask you multi tenant database we'll going to give you two option while creating a 19c database and same thing goes for your 12c when you are creating a 12c database we'll going to ask you two options normal database or the multi tenant database when you are creating a database but starting with the 21c there is no option like that the moment you install 921 21c database it's a multi tenant database default it's a multi tenant database there is no option to create normal database and if i go further beyond in 11g it is only normal database in 11g we don't have this multi tenant architecture as of 11g whenever you install a database default that database will be normal database whether it's a stand alone or rack doesn't matter that database is a normal database in 12c oracle has introduced this multi tenant architecture and because of that when you install your database it used to ask you two options one is you want to create a normal database or you want to create a multi tenant database in 12c because the multi tenant architecture came in 12c and the same thing goes to 19c when you install the database it will ask you whether you want to create a normal database or you want to create a multi tenant database and when it comes to 21c and further now 23c has been released the developer version has been released even there only one option multi tenant database the multi tenant database is nothing but your cdbs and pdbs container database and pluggable database and in 19c we have these two options you can go with whatever option you want but in 21c onwards there is nothing called normal database concept here it's all about multi tenant so because of that learning this multi tenant architecture is very important right learning this multi tenant architecture is very important and we are going to talk about end to end about this multi tenant architecture with respect to rack how you can do a pdb cloning cdb cloning and how we can manage how we can connect to cdb how we can connect to pdb how we can manage users common users local users common role local role how we can clone your pdbs how we can clone your cdbs and how we can create your pdbs and cdbs so we'll talk about 
administration, managing listeners, everything with respect to multi-tenant architecture. And followed by chapter number 17 is about ACFS. When you work on a rack, ACFS is one of the brilliant feature. Many customers will make use of, make use of this one. ACFS uh, stands for ASM Cluster File System. So you can mount your disk group as a normal OS mount point and you can use it for day-to-day -day operations. We'll talk more about that ACFS configuration, administration, and why we need this ACFS. So one of the brilliant feature we can make use of this. We'll talk about that SFS more. And chapter number 18 is rack one node. We have a different types of database. Just quickly give you a glance on that. Let's check it out here. Like we have a different uh, types of databases. I'll just give you. We have a standalone database let let's look at here we have this standalone database and we have standalone oracle restart database two and the third one is rack one node that's the third type of database and the fourth one is rack database in general when you work on any client or any environment you may end up with any one of these four types of database and each of these four types of database has its own unique uh, characters, right? So you can work in any of the client, any of this type of database. And based upon this type of database, you can you know, deal with that or you can manage, you are able to manage. So in, our, in order to manage these databases, first you need to understand what are the features, what are the concepts, why these many types of database? What are the unique use case of these databases? So we'll, we'll talk on that. Right, so Ravi is asking sound volume, please raise. So is my voice is audible? Any issue, any can, can somebody confirm? Is it low or is it only issue with the Ravi? The lag is there. Right, any, anybody else like? Is it uh, low? My voice is coming low or is it fine? No, it's fine. Right. Thanks. Thanks for confirmation on that. So Ravi, maybe you can in change your change your headset or change your volume uh, because no issue from my side and also the internet is good. So whoever saying the lag, probably you can check your internet speed. Uh, yeah. All right. Moving further, uh, that's about rack one node versus rack. We'll try to understand more and different types of those databases. And patching, very common activity. Believe me, this is one of the common activity for most of the client. Because Oracle will release four quarterly patches. Oracle will release four quarterly patches. Every Jan, they'll release quarterly patches. That is the PSU patches, bug fixes, security fixes, Jan, April, and July, October. These are very, very critical vulnerability, security fixes, bug fixes, and PSU patches. Oracle will release every year four times of patches. And it is a DBA responsibility to patch all these four or once in a year, or you have to define how we want to patch. You want to patch all the four patches or only one patches in one year or two patches in one year. It's all the strategy you define, but patching is going to be one of the common activity in order to keep your database up to date and in order to security compliance or in order to meet your security compliance or you know remove all the vulnerabilities and keep your database up to date. Patching is going to be very important. We DBA job, we are going to do this patching for every client. And this is going to be one of the common activity for a DBS. So we'll talk about this patching. And again, there's a various patching, rolling patching, non-rolling patching. When it comes to rack, you can, without downtime, how you can do a patching. So that's a rolling patching. And with the downtime, how you can do a patching, that's a non-rolling patching. We'll talk about that rolling and non-rolling. And also how you can do that patching using a O patch or O patch at all. And you can patch your clusterware 
or the grid infrastructure or the ASM home and followed by your Oracle home and followed by your databases. You're going to patch three component, your grid infrastructure, GI, that's nothing but your ASM home and followed by your Oracle home and followed by your database. So we'll talk about all this patching in the chapter number 19. And in chapter number 20, it's about upgradation. How we can do this upgradation. So basically, uh, two types of upgradation comes here. Uh, are two types in the sense you have your ASM and you have your DB. So ASM will be running under GI, grid infrastructure home, GI home, and DB will be running Oracle home. So assuming that your ASM is running with a 12C and your database is also running with a 12C. So this 12C GI home, or you can call it as a GI home, or many people will get confused. The GI home, grid infrastructure home, or ASM home, or cluster home, clusterware home. I'll just mention CLU. You can just understand it's a clusterware home. It's all one and same. GI, grid infrastructure home, or ASM home, or clusterware home. It's all one and same. Typically, these will start with like U01 app and 12C slash grid. So this is your 12C grid home or ASM home or cluster wave home, all one and same. And your DB home, we call it as a Oracle home or you can call it as a DB home or you can call it as a Oracle software. All are like same, Oracle home, Oracle DB home, or Oracle software, or database home, all are one and same. These are typically start with like U01, app, Oracle, product, and slash 12C slash db home underscore one db home underscore two so this is a typical general home u01 app oracle product 12c and db home underscore one db home underscore two so this is your oracle home so when it comes to upgradation whatever this clusterware home or the grid home or asm home from 12c we're going to upgrade to 19c and whatever this oracle home we're going to upgrade it to Again, 19C. Once you upgrade your Oracle home, we are going to upgrade a databases. In this DB home, we are running database one, database two, and database three. All these database you need to upgrade to 19C. So here, when it comes to database side, you have two steps here. First, you need to upgrade your Oracle home from 12C to 19C. Once you upgrade your Oracle home, whatever the databases are running under that 12C Oracle home, you have to upgrade the databases. So there's the two chapter, Oracle home upgradation followed by Oracle database upgradation. Again, Oracle home upgradation means we don't have the concept of Oracle home upgradation. It's basically a brand new 19C Oracle home installation and followed by your database upgradation. So we'll talk about this end-to-end -end database upgradation and this is your GI upgradation. It's just a software. There's no database running here. It's just a cluster where software where your ASM instance will be running. The moment you upgrade your grid infrastructure from 12C to 19C, automatically ASM will stop here in 12C, automatically start in 19C. So it's a one-step activity here. Right, we'll do this one-step activity and here you have to do Oracle Home upgradation first, basically installation of 19C Oracle Home, followed by this database upgradation. Whatever running under this 12C Home, we have to upgrade to 19C Home. So this database upgradation has uh, various methods. One first method is manual method, and the second one is your cell script. And the third one is your Perl script. And your fourth one is DBUA. And the fifth one is 19 onwards. We have something called auto upgrade. So you have a five methods to do a database upgrade from 12C to 19C or from 11G to 19C or whichever version to whichever version. If you want to do the database upgrade, and you can follow any of these method. Manual method, manually you're running cat upgrade.sql. 
in SQL command prompt, or you can run a cell script to do a database upgrade, or you can run a Perl script to do to do a database upgrade, or you can use a GUI method called DBUA database upgrade assistant, or you can use this 19C new feature called auto upgrade. It's a new feature in 19C. Use auto upgrade to do this all five methods for your database upgrade. Right. That's about database upgrade in chapter number 20 and followed by this chapter number 21 and 22. It's about expansion of your clusterware. So basically you have two node rack now. You have set up a two node rack. And if you want to add one more node to your cluster, you can do a node addition. Or if you want to add one more node and make it four node cluster, the node addition or node removal, we'll talk about that. And if you have four node rack, later you don't want to use this four node and you can remove the node. That's node addition and node removal. Right, that is about node addition and node removal. And later now, converting your standalone database to rack. So right now I'm having only single instance. My database is running here. How I can convert this database to rack database. So I have this rack set up here, two node rack set up. How I can convert this database to a rack no, rack database using RMAN method or using a DBCA or using enterprise manager or using R config. There are various methods you can convert your standalone database to rack database. So that we're going to talk about conversion of your single instance. There are again various methods, right? Like you are you want to use enterprise manager or DBCA database configuration assistant, or you can use R config, or you can use RMAN cloning method or you can use a manual instance addition. So various methods to convert your standalone database to rack, we'll talk about that. But that's uh, whatever the chapter number 22, it's all about the course curriculum, what I planned because this course curriculum is formed based upon my experience, based upon various clients where I worked, based upon that I formed this particular course curriculum. And if, any of the topic you are interested and which is not included here and that need to be covered, I'm happy to take that based upon how many students are in, interested in that particular topic. And I'll take that as a extra topic after the end of this course. So this is a officially formed course, which is gonna delivered as part of this particular training. And if any extra topic need to be included, that will be taken it as an extra topic and that will be covered at the end of the course. Right, that is not enough here. So, and if you see these last three chapters, chapter number 23, 24 and 25 is about resume writing and cover letter preparation. I'm gonna go over my own resume and cover letter, how you can write your resume and cover letter and how we can prepare that and what are the tips and what need to be included, how you can write your resume, what, how many pages it should be, all these uh, points I'm gonna cover over here. And whenever we're talking about each and every topics, we'll be discussing about what are the sample interview questions and answers. And collectively at the end of the course, we'll talk about all those, we'll brief about all those questions and answers in one shot, in one particular session and then that will help for you know your inter preparation and you can crack the interview once you glance all through the questions and answers right and chap last chapter it will be for the mock interview it is not mandatory it is uh, left to individual who is interested you can go ahead and register for the mock interview i'll be conducting one to one i'll connect with you one to one and then it's a kind of a real time interview where i'm going to ask questions and you're going to answer uh, you will feel that you know it's kind of a real time interview where you are facing it. So this is very very important whenever you are trying for a new job or trying to look for a new opportunities. Try for this particular mock interview. So if you make any mistake, I'm gonna give you some advice or hints over there so that you can able to crack the actual interview for any of the client. Right. So any questions so far? Uh, on the course curriculum, whatever I explained so far. Great. 
couple of questions in the chat here. Uh, which method would be suggested for the upgradation? Again, uh, once we start our actual class, we're going to understand which is best, which is not best, and what method you are to opt. Because each of those five methods has its own pros and cons. Once you understand all of those pros and cons, and then you itself you can able to identify which one is going to be best. And again, which method is best for converting your single instance to rack? Again, for that, you have multiple options. Again, once we go through that entire course and each of those methods, and once you understand about its own pros and cons, you itself you are able to identify which method is good or which method is bad. And Mo Mohan is asking uh, cloud migration. Again, cloud migration is which cloud migration you're talking about. When you talk about cloud migration in AWS, you don't support rack. When you talk about Azure, we don't support Rack. And when you talk about Oracle Cloud, we support Rack. And migration, there's a various tool for migration. And you can use your export or you can use our main many method. You can use a Rack database to migrate or standalone database to migrate, and you can run your Rack database on the cloud. Right. So again, Balaji is asking, can you use SRHTL command in standalone database? Again. Before asking that questions, you need to understand this particular slide here. Do you know what is this standalone database? Do you know this? What is this standalone database with Oracle Restart? Do you know what is this Rack OneNote? And do you know what is this Rack database? Once you are able to understand these four types of databases, and you itself you are able to answer whether I can use SRCTL or not. And you can use S in simple to answer your questions. In these three, you can be able to use SRVCTL, and in this, you will not be able to use SRVCTL. SRVCTL is supported for your standalone with Oracle Restart, Rack One Node, and Rack Database. All these three types of databases, SRVCTL is supported, and for standalone, SRVCTL is not supported. Right. So basic understanding is you need to know what are these type of database. Later, you will be able to understand whether I can use or not. Uh, but Malik, I was able to use SRECTL in standalone. No, it's not possible. That utility itself will not come with the standalone. Uh, I uh, I don't see. I mean, I didn't see that ASM or uh, anything of a database one, a database two in the server. No, you, so, you uh, that SRECTL software itself will not come with the standalone. That's not possible at all. Okay. All right. Backups and performance tunings on DR configuration is same as the core DBS. Backup, we're going to talk about doing the backup here. Again, when it comes to rack, there's a lot of parameter comes, a lot of tuning comes here. So you need to understand which node you're going to take a backup, how you're going to tune your backup, whether you're going to take a backup using a scan or the service or the standalone. The concept remains same, our man, you're going to use it. But how we're going to take a backup, that changes. How we're going to restore, that changes. The totally different. The concept remains same. Our man, I'm going to use it for backup and restore recoveries. But how we can do it, that varies. Okay. This same thing for your DR. Performance tuning and same thing for DR. And again, it's going to change here. Because it's standalone, it's a straightforward. One node connection, directly you can use it. Here, various, when it comes for primary and DR, it is not only one network. It comes your scan, VIPs, and public IPs, and your connection will go through any of those. So again, the concept remains same, but how it performs, that varies. Is it, is it covered in this course, sir? No. The DR backup is covered here. As I said, backup will be backups and restores will be part of this. But your DR is, again, will cover it as one extra session if interested. Thanks. All right. So, any questions on the course curriculum, whatever we covered so far here? Right. If no question, let's move on. That's about second point what we wanted to talk about. And third one is course duration and timings. Right, so very important. Uh, let's understand 
uh, we talked about course curriculum now let's talk about the course durations and the timings so the actual the today as i said uh, today and tomorrow first of july and second of july these are the two demo classes followed by 8th july is the one we are going to start the actual classes starting with the next saturday the timing is going to be four hours on saturday and four hours on sunday that will be 7 a.m ist to 11 a.m ist that pretty much 9 30 p.m est to 1 30 a.m est four hours on the weekends weekend means we will be having only saturday and sunday this particular rack classes are on weekends only saturday and sunday four hours on saturday and four hours on sunday so it's a weekend batch saturday and sunday only the timing again remains same 7 a.m to 11 a.m four hours on saturday and four hours on sunday that is 9 30 p.m est to 1 30 a.m est in eastern time zone so four hours on saturday and four hours on sunday so we are gonna pretty much able to cover in five weekends so if we start on 8th of july that's the first weekend and 15th of july second 22nd of july and 29th of july followed by 5th of july that's where we are able to complete the course and provided and if you have interested in any of those extra topics we'll take one more weekend that is 12th of uh, sorry 12th of august we'll take one more extra weekend where we can cover some of those advanced concept if somebody asks just now about a dr setup rack to rack dr setup right we can take one session on that rack to rack dr setup right so that's one extra session we can take it or any other sessions or any other topic you want to discuss we can take it on any of that for the consecutive weekends right that's about the course duration and again the this particular course is a paid training and the course fees is going to be 15k inr 15000 indian rupees and it's going to be 185 us dollar and the mode is going to be online zoom session it will be like every day we'll be covering zoom or team session or webex i'm going to share once we uh, commence or once we start the course we're going to talk about that further communication and it will be on the 19c version right that's for the course duration or course timing and as i said uh, the details are here uh, the weekend batch timings and five weekend is the total course duration and again as i said this is the paid training the course fees is going to be 15000 indian rupees or 185 us dollar and for this one and many people ping me yesterday as well uh, the the payment method probably you're going to ping me on my whatsapp number or you know you can drop me an email probably i can ping it over here in the chat you can take a note of that uh, whatsapp number or gmail id i pinged in the chat here so once you connect with me one to one i'm going to further guide you for the payment processing how you can do a payment and what are the options you can have it all those i can talk to you one to one once you ping me on my whatsapp or drop me an email here i pinged in the chat you can take a note of that right that's about the phase details and the payment processing right any questions so far on the course timings or the duration or the course payment right that's about the course timing and duration okay let's talk about the google drive access so what exactly this Google Drive access, let's put a link over here. Right. So we have various Google Drive access here. Already most of the students who are already registered, they already got access and they're going through those materials. So we have this rack course material. That's a first Google Drive access. You will be getting it out. I'll just open that one here. 
so that is your that is your that's that's our first link that's a course material so we have various um folders here as and when we proceed further with the course and you will get to know when to use all this course uh, material so for now i'll just go through one or two directories here the very first is in the rack course material that's the first link whatever you're seeing here rack course material that's the first google drive and you can see various folders over there and we are going to go with this rack course material and inside that again there's so many files the very important file is rack course ppt so this is a single ppt we are going to refer for this entire course i'll be referring this single ppt for this entire course so you can just go through this entire single ppt for this throughout this course and it has everything uh, attached over here right that's the first thing and at the same time that is the first folder in the course materials rack course materials and we have this rack lab exercise each and every topic we have this lab exercise with the commands uh, built in with that so we can uh, use all of them and the second thing is we have this uh, ready labs here ready vms for the rack and we have so many labs here rack lab one lab two lab three these are empty labs and followed by rack 12c setup with asm we have a 12c rack setup two node rack setup and we have rack 19c setup with asm this is with oracle user this is the grid user and again we have a rack 19c setup with asm and db using grid user and oracle user again if you go with this one rack 19c setup with asm and db with oracle user so we have this already uh, document attached here what are these labs various labs these are your ready labs and we'll be covering as part of this course we'll be covering the rack installation if you see here my chapter number three onwards chapter number eight this is about the rack installation we will be doing one time rack installation configuration setup from the scratch end to end we're going to do it here once that is done you no need to once that lab is deleted or once your lab is crashed due to some activity you are doing some restores or some upgradation or migration practice you're doing it your lab is crashed and you don't need to do that installation again because that installation will take one day or two day for you for that we have a ready labs attached over here these are the ready two node rack setup you can just download them and zip them and use it in your laptop so you no need to do sit and do this entire installation from the scratch again because that may take one day or one week based upon what are the issues you're going to face one time you can practice that installation configuration or setup two node rack from the scratch understand each and every concept once that is done you no need to do that again and again because we have uh, so many ready labs which is available you can just uh, use them right so again we have so many folders here in this rack course materials we will use them as and when we proceed further with each and every topic we'll get to know when to use these folders right that is about the rack course materials you'll be getting access on this rack course materials and then let's go here second google drive access this is the previous batch recordings if i open here already i believe i granted access on this google drive for those who are registered a week back or uh, two week back and they are all going through these recordings so if you see these are like day one two three these are my previous batch recordings which is conducted on april month and if you observe here every day whatever the recordings like for example if i go here every day whatever the recordings will take that recording will be uploaded here along with that whatever the commands we're going to execute in my lab all those commands will be uploaded along with the recordings when you are watching the recordings you can refer that command line so that you can execute the same command in your 
lab so you can practice side by side when you're watching this recordings right that is your previous batch recording so that when i'm conducting a next week you can well prepare in advance you can go through those recordings and you can prepare yourself so that you will interact more when you take a live sessions and you can ask more questions so for that you will be getting access on the previous batch recordings so that you can prepare by your yourself well in advance so that you will do an active interaction when you take an actual course right and we have this third link other information that is basically your softwares and iso image patches and some of the automation script and some of the tools whatever needed for dbs so this is for you know some of the softwares and patches and followed by interview questions and answers we'll be covering at the end of the course and we have this interview questions and answers if i open that so we have these are the interview questions and answers written by myself it's not like copied from anywhere these are like questions and answers which are written by me so in case of lose both sp file and p file how we can restore and in case of if you lose a control file you can restore and what are the data dictionary views or the tables and what are the dynamic performance views and if you go further down and there are a lot of things a lot of questions here like you know more than 500 600 questions and some of the interesting questions whatever we used to ask it in my whatsapp status all those scenario based questions how many armen channel you will be allocating for the database backup and all those answers you can this this document is a running document i'll be keep on appending the questions and answers we'll be referring this one right that's about your third google drive and the fourth one is for this ongoing batch so probably we don't have anything as of now so it's a new link like we don't have anything here so as and when every day we'll be taking a sessions we'll be uploading the same recordings over here so this is a running live uh again ongoing uh, folder for this recordings here i'll be uploading all the recordings here so these are the four google drive access you'll be getting it once you register for the course and this google drive access will be a lifetime accessible no limit on that so you can access it anytime it will be available for lifetime access and in fact there's no restriction on this one you can literally go out and then download like let's go right click and download it you can download it locally low limitations no restriction on this course materials or the course recordings or the course content or the ppts you can literally go ahead and download it locally on your laptop and you can save it no restriction at all or you can refer it on this google drive because these are lifetime accessible but um, lifetime accessible materials here right so that's about the uh, google drive and the zoom link probably i already okay i not yet said uh, we are going to give a new zoom or teams or webex link for our regular classes right as i said today and tomorrow first and second are demo classes starting with the 8th of july we'll be starting the actual course so on that 8th of july we'll be giving a new zoom link or the teams or webex i'll communicate further on that so we'll use that zoom link for the entire course right that is about the new link we're going to launch it for the regular classes right how we can do a communication it is about via whatsapp group probably i think uh, uh, we got around a few registrations and they already made a payment and i have added all of them into whatsapp group and we have started communication in that particular whatsapp group and any questions and queries every day when we conduct a sessions and every weekend when we conduct a session after that you have any questions or queries when you are practicing it you can use this whatsapp group you can post any questions over there and we'll connect with you and then we'll clarify all those questions and queries and again this whatsapp group is only for those registered students right so we'll be having only a uh, limited uh, candidates over there limited students over there and we'll be communicating all the questions queries or any issues on that particular whatsapp group 
and this whatsapp group will be accessible for lifetime even after completion of this course you can post any questions or queries related to your work or whenever you get a, any new task or you need any help you can post your questions or the queries on that group will be happy to help on that right so that's about the communication will be through whatsapp group only for those um, you know registered students right any questions so far on the course curriculum or the course durations and timings and the fee structure and again as i said for the payment please be in touch with me on my whatsapp number or on my email id so i can further guide you on this uh, payment process and the google drive access again we'll talk more on this google drive access on our regular classes on probably on 8th we'll talk about more on this google drive access and again for the course we're going to share the new zoom link and all for the registered students and again communication will happen through whatsapp group and this whatsapp group and the google drive access are lifetime accessible we can carry it throughout the lifetime right if no questions so far let's talk about an important aspect what are the prerequisites who can register for this course who can attend this particular course and this particular course is for everyone whether you are a junior dba having one year experience 10 year experience 15 years of experience doesn't matter everyone can attend this particular course because this course is formed such a way that if you observe this course curriculum here this particular course starts from the scratch basic understanding of the rack clusterware grid infrastructure concept and it will go all the way till advanced level so that everyone can attend this particular course starting with your junior dba senior dba your sme doesn't matter everyone can attend this particular course no restriction at all right that's a one important aspect about this particular course because these are the concept or the course curriculum formed based upon the my experience with the various clients where i worked and as a rack administrator what are the day to day activities we i listed all of them and formed this particular course curriculum because of that fact anyone can attend this particular course so that it will start from the scratch till advanced level whatever needed for day to day operations for the rack administrator everything will be covered here right anyone can attend that is one thing and in order to do this rack setup in order to understand each and every concept so any one anyone can attend this particular anyone anyone in the sense like you are a junior or senior or sme you are a junior dba your senior dba or your oracle sme doesn't matter anyone can attend this one right that's the first thing and what is the other prerequisites the basic database or basic database knowledge is mandatory so you should know you should be already working as a oracle db you should know that basic oracle database understanding uh, basic db understanding what is oracle what is oracle database architecture what is sp file what is p file what is standalone database you should already know this basic oracle knowledge if you have not worked as a oracle dba if you don't know oracle knowledge and if you are not a dba and this is not the course you have to first learn oracle database course and once you complete that and you can come to this rack because without basic database knowledge without understanding a database architecture this rack course is going to be very very complicated and you will lose a uh, track and you will be lost in the middle so my sincere request if you are new to this oracle world if you are new to oracle technologies uh, first attend the database course and learn the basic concept basic architecture of database and then join this particular rack that's the second thing and the third thing is very important in order to do this rack setup 
will be doing it on individual laptop. This entire two node rack setup will be done in each and individual laptop. For that, you should have a minimum 16 GB RAM in your laptop and 100 GB SSD. You should have a minimum 16 GB RAM and minimum 100 GB SSD. You can able to do a two node rack setup with this minimum 16 GB RAM and 100 GB RAM, but the performance will be little slow, but you can manage it. The bare minimum requirement is 16 GB RAM and 100 GB SSD. And if you have more than 16 GB RAM, like 24 GB or 32 GB RAM, that is well and good. That's where we need you. We basically need minimum 24 GB or 32 GB RAM for to do a lab setup or to work seamlessly without any lag or without any issue. This is the best recommendation, minimum 24 GB or 32 GB, but still with a 16 GB minimum RAM and 100 GB SSD, you can able to do a two node rack setup and able to practice the lab exercise, but there will be little delay, uh, but you have to bear with that because of the minimal resource here, right? That is a, a minimal prerequisites, right? Anyone can attend irrespective of whether one year of experience, five years of experience, 10 years of experience, and 15 years of experience, doesn't matter, anyone can attend. And you should have a bis minimum basic database architecture, database knowledge, then only this rack course is good for you. Otherwise, it is not a, not a course for you. You have to first learn the database course. And you should have a minimum 16 GB RAM, 100 GB SSD, or the best tool recommendation will be 24 GB or 32 GB RAM for the seamless you know, lab exercise, right? Anything lesser than 16 GB, again, you will not be able to do a lab exercise. You just can listen and you can just uh, what, listen and then hear whatever I can do and you can see whatever the practice I'm doing it. But when you want to do a hands-on, if you have a 8 GB RAM, 10 GB RAM in your laptop, you'll not be able to do it. All right, so that's about the, the prerequisites, minimum requirement. Any questions here so far? Sir, I am Ravi Verma here. Yep. 16 GB means uh, Oracle virtual machine. No, your main is... laptop. Your laptop should have 16 GB okay. RAM. Main laptop should have 16 GB RAM. Right. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, we can't manage with AGP, is it? Uh, we can't uh, do the installation of what is? No, we cannot. All right. All right. So that's for whatever I wanted to talk about this particular course. In starting with the introduction about me, the course curriculum, whatever we discussed so far and the course duration, course timing, and the fee structure, and followed by the course materials, how we are gonna get access. That's all about on the course material, will be on the Google Drive, and the, all the course recording will be on the Google Drive. And as I said, this is the empty link right now. Every day, each and every session we're gonna conduct, everything will be recorded, and will be uploaded in the Google Drive, along with the notepad, so that, you can watch them anytime. These are like lifetime accessible material. And this is one example that, right? These are a previous batch recordings. So you can see all the previous batch recordings. And if I can open here, uh, database upgrade. If I, if you want to watch the database upgrade, and this is a video, you can watch the database recordings or you can download it and you can watch it. And along with that, if you open this notepad, whatever the command I am running it on the lab here, you can see this is my lab session and whatever the command I'm running it here, I'll be copying all the commands and I'll be uploading the same document on the Google Drive. When you are watching these recordings, along with that, you can refer this text pad, you can practice side by side. So the same thing will be recorded every day session and uploaded here, starting with on next weekend onwards, right? And again, I'm gonna share the Zoom link. Already, as I said, I already created a WhatsApp group for this particular batch and I added all the registered students who are done the payment and already you all hope you all got access. 
and few students who are registered yesterday they are not got access i'm going to get uh, i'm going to grant the access by today max and once you get access you can go through this previous batch recordings and get ready yourself and i'm going to share the actual zoom link in our whatsapp group so that we can use the same zoom link for this entire throughout course starting with the next week and again as i said all the communication will be on the whatsapp group right these are the prerequisites what we just talk right so i'll give a pause here one minute if anyone has any questions or queries if no questions or queries so far i would like to proceed further with some of the important topic as part of this demo session i'm going to talk about one or two concept for today and tomorrow and then we'll continue further right hi malik uh, balaji here uh, yeah. there is yeah, there is a, a server like where i have the database names like uh, mpct1 mpct2 uh, mpct1 like that and i can use the srv ctl config database i think that i uh, use me the output uh, could you please tell me what environment is this is this rack or oracle so you have to check whether it's a rack or oracle um you have to make sure that where is your data files are residing connect your database and check your database data files where they are residing whether they are residing on your asm disk groups or the file system then you will understand whether it is using a rack or the stand alone if it is using asm uh, in the uh, pmon out i mean in the output uh, pmon output it should go the asm right but no. i don't see any asm no asm is not mandatory remember we talked about flex cluster if it's a 19c starting with a flex cluster asm is not mandatory you only your asm is down your database will be up and running okay yeah to cast connect your database and check where are your data files whether in the file system or the rack or the disk groups then you will understand okay all right it is using u01 app or or a data right so uh, could you please tell me what uh, environment is this yeah it's a stand alone file system if it is stand alone then how i am able to use srv ctl command here again you need to check how many nodes you have it i'm going to explain that in a minute give me a second okay right let's uh, continue here further right what i'll do now i'll take one or two sessions here uh, you know i thought of covering around few sessions part of this demo here i will try to cover one or two sessions today and then i'll continue with uh, tomorrow for the more sessions like these are some important topics i wanted to cover rack architecture rack networking stand alone versus rack and pros and cons installation types and cluster tar sequence let's start with one or two now and we'll continue with the tomorrow's further sessions right these are the important topics what and what i wanted to cover in this demo right first i think uh, let's cover stand alone versus rack just simple i am going to show here demo directly i don't want to explain it in this uh, slide i'll directly go on the lab here i have this oracle lab one let's go here i have this oracle lab one and if i do ps hyphen ef grep smon ps hyphen ef grep smon i can see a dev db so if i do ps hyphen ef grep smon on this particular lab i can see this a dev db so this is my dev db which is a stand alone database with a single node so the moment i do ps if any upgrade ps mon i can see this dev db this is the owner of that i'll just log into that particular owner su oracle i log in i'm going to run this dot orinv to set the environment for that dev db right env pipeline grep capital ora so dev db oracle base oracle home all the environment is set to a dev db 
I'll connect back to my SQL command line. I can run select name from VDollar data file. So all the data files which are running under U01 file system, that's your standalone database, single node, right? So that's about your data files. If you want to do select name from, again, we'll talk about if you are a basic database or DBA, you should be able to know what are the data files, right? If you don't know what are the data files and you are lacking your basic knowledge and this rack course is going to be very, very difficult, right? Select name from V dollar control file. So you have a control files one, you have control file one and control file two. You have two control files. And again, they are in the U01. So that's your file system. And further, if I go select member from V dollar log file. Again, if you see this log file, you have a log one, log two, and log three. You have a three log files with the multiplexed. And again, if you don't know what is this log file, again, you're lacking in your basic architecture. And this rack course is going to be very, very difficult because when you are talking about rack concept, and if you start asking what is control file, what is data file, what is log file, so we end up with basic you know, architecture, basic foundation. So that's where you, know, you should know your basic architecture, basic DBA steps so that we can easily understand the rack concept here. Right, so this is your, again, one more parameter. Show parameter, show parameter SP file. Right, if you see for this particular DBDB, we have this SP file under Oracle Home DBS. We have read log files under U01 file system. We have control files, again, under U01 file system. We have data files, again, under U01 file system. Right, now let's exit from here. That is for your lab one standalone database. Let's go to other labs here. I have this host one and I have this host two here. Right, I have two servers, host node one, host node two. If I go to node one, PS F and EF, create smon. I'll copy this. I don't want this one, let's remove this. And if I go to other node, if I run the PS and EF grep smon, right again, as I said, if somebody asked what is this PS and EF grep smon, again, you were lacking in your basic knowledge. We're just using this OSTTT PS process list and I'm gripping for smon, that is system monitor, one of the mandatory background process for your database, right? So that is understanding of your core database architecture is mandatory. Otherwise you will not be able to continue with this rack course. Right, let's remove this line I don't want, okay. So node one, I know to, I have two node here. The moment I run this one, when I run that lab one, PSF and EF grep S1, I got only DevDB. And here node one and node two, if I run this, smon i get asm1 and asm2 the moment i see this asm1 and asm2 orcl is the database and i have orcl1 and orcl2 two instances my two instances for one database are residing over here and if i connect to either instance 1 or instance 2 on node one or node two, I can run the same command. Let's go to node one, log into Oracle, or dot env, 
and provide your instance name ORCL1 and again verify ENV pipeline grab capital Vara. So your ORCL1, your base and Oracle Home is set. Connect back to your database. And I'm going to run the same command. Whatever I ran it here in the standalone, select name from VDLR database. So your data file, you can see it is starting with plus data. And here in this standalone, everything is starting with slash. Slash is your OS file system. That is file system, your files are residing under OS. And whatever you see this plus, that is indicates your ASM storage. So your all the data files are residing under plus data. And let's go with your control files. Your data and reco. One control file is on data. One control file is on reco. And let's go to your log files. Let's copy and run this one. You have again read log one, read log two, read log three, read log four. One is on data and one is on reco. That is again multiplexing the duplicate copy of your read log. Right again, all of them in plus data and plus echo again ASM storage, not the OS storage. Right. Next parameter is show parameter SP file. And your SP file is under again plus data. So which indicates my first database, DevDB, is a standalone, which is a file system, only one node instance. And my ORCL database, which is a two node rack database. That is one way to identify whether it's a rack or whether it's a standalone just by running PSF in FGRAPSMON and connecting to the database and querying for your database files. And there's other method to identify using your cluster underscore database parameter using your ASM home and other things. This is the simplest way you can identify whether you're running a rack or whether you're running a standalone database. So in simple words, standalone, one server, one database, which is mapped together. That's your DevDB. I have this a DevDB database, which is running under this lab one. All the data files are residing under that user own storage. That is one instance, one database mapped with one to one mapping here. So here rack multiple servers and same database. What that mean, if I go back to my notepad here, whatever I saved, I have instance one, I have instance two running under node one and node two. So that's uh, correlated to node one, node two. I have two servers. My ORCL one is running here and my ORCL two is running here and both of them are having the same data. Same data in the sense, whatever query I ran here, this all, if I go to second node and run the same query, I'll get the same output. I'll go to second node, node two and set the environment to Right, so I connected to second node here, node two. And if I run the same command, select name from VDLR data file, I can get all the data files. Right, all the data files, again, same, both the instances pointing to same data file. And if I run this control file on the second node, right, data and record same control files and if i run the log files right all the log files is pointing to same thing and if i go to sp file right that's also pointing to the same thing so basically your standalone is one instance, one database or data files mapped one to one. 
in case of rack you have multiple servers where multiple instances are running pointing to a single database that's a shared storage between both the nodes and whereas in case of one instance goes down your database is still accessible so that will be explained over here standalone versus rack what is the advantages or the pros if you see you have one server this is your lab one lab one whatever the dev db database is running right and you have a application the clients are connecting via url mobile or desktop to application and all the connection will go to one single server that is your lab one right that's about this one i'm talking about whatever this lab one let's go here whatever this lab one where your a uh, dev db is running all will go to one single connections all will go to this lab one from the lab one they are able to access the dev db and suppose this lab is down right your lab is down and nobody can able to access the data files or the database it's a complete downtime whereas in case of rack the clients are connecting to url mobile or client or desktop any application all the connection will go to application server and from the application server they can connect to anything in case in my case here node one and node two i have node one and node two my database is orcl which is available on shared storage the client connection will go here and they will connect and client connection will go here and they will connect and in case this node one goes down automatically the client connection will go to node two that is called something transparent application failure taf transparent application failure so all the connections which are connected to node one assuming that 100 connections are here and 100 connections are here the moment node one goes down all these 100 connections will be automatically rerouted to other nodes that is your tap transparent application failure again we'll explain in our actual classes what is the tfa and how it works but that is uh, one of the beauty high availability even though one node is down still your application is able to connect to database and your application is able to continue to run right that's the advantages of your rack in case of rack you can get this high availability and you can increase the nodes and all those things right that's a simple understanding for standalone versus rack any questions guys so far so doesn't mean let me say one node is like one instance one instance or one server because one instance will run on one linux server right in in, in this case here in this case here i have one linux server and one instance and i have a second linux server and second instance either your linux server goes down or either your instance goes down doesn't matter it is down that node is down right if i can go back to my slide here so here your instance may go down or this is your host your host may go down doesn't matter complete downtime nobody can access to database and same thing for rack your instance can go down or this is linux server server can go down and second node your instance can go down or your linux server can go down and it doesn't matter whether your instance down or the linux server down nobody can connect to here they all have to connect from here right so what is if the data files are stored in the database then what is the use of asm what is stored in the asm again why asm will explain more on that asm class and if you see this oracle lab one oracle lab one 
and your dev db when i query this weed alert data file all my system user sysox undo all these data files residing under u01 this is the os file system provided by your storage admin in order to maintain this particular database we need to depending upon storage admin if i need any space on this particular storage i need to contact my storage admin and he has to increase the space any storage requirement expansion or reduction or whatever it is we need to depending upon storage admin if i go to my rack database here my orcl1 or orcl2 all are residing under data and rico this is asm storage as a dba i can increase the storage i can decrease the storage without need of storage admin i can directly connect to this disk groups and i can increase and decrease the disk groups so that is the elimination of storage dependencies i can do my own storage administration here that is where asm comes who can provide this plus data who can provide this plus rico your asm can provide that's where you need a asm right when you do this psi for ef grep smon here you can see this asm and this database okay i understand database is my database instance client will connect to my database via this instance and why i need this asm this asm instance who can provide the storage asm will provide the storage that's where you need a asm right so cluster is a combination of nodes yes that's a simple understand cluster means you have combined two node three node four node and make a cluster um, cluster the maximum nodes are uh, mm, uh, I I don't know how many maximum nodes, but in my career I worked for sixty four nodes. One of the client we are having sixty four cluster nodes. Oops. Right. Let's. Uh, sir, sir, you just said sixty four nodes, and how many databases? You can have whatever database you want. Sixty four nodes or two node, three node, four node. For no. that. For that you can go here. This particular slide will answer that. Where is that one? Give me a second. Do I have that slide? Okay, here. So let's assume you have. node 1 node 2 node 3 node 4 node 5 you have five node cluster here and out of this five node cluster you can create a dev db only on instance 1 and instance 2 you can create database on only two nodes and you can create a test db on instance 1 here and instance 2 here and you can create your uat db only instance one right and then you can create your prod db and you can have your instance one instance two and instance three and instance four and instance five you can do any combination when you have a cluster of four node five node six node you can create a small database only on few nodes and remaining i don't want or if it's a critical production database you can go ahead and create across all the nodes any combinations you can create when you have cluster right right yes sir any questions guys so far on this two understanding stand alone versus rack malik uh, you didn't answer my question Now I need to take a look on your environment. So, in simple words, whatever I explained, rack or the standalone. Let's connect and check it out. Okay. 
have to check, a, you have to take a look on your endowment, what kind of a setup they have done it, and then able to answer. Okay. All right. Next, going further. Before this one, let's go here. What are the types of database available? I said four types of uh, databases. You can see it. What I can say now. Standalone. That's your first one, standalone. That's the first, these are the types of databases. Like any client you go, these are the four types of databases you can see it. One is standalone. Second one is standalone, nothing but we call it as a Oracle restart. And the third one is rack and the fourth one is rack one node so these are the four types of uh, databases what you can see this is a standalone means without asm single server without ASM and storage is file system. Standalone, we call it as a Oracle restart that is with ASM. That is your database is single server it's a with ASM and storage is ASM. For this one, best example is I already showed here. Whatever this Oracle Lab one, whatever this DevDB, Oracle Lab one, DevDB is an example for standalone, just a standalone that is without ASM and standalone that is something similar to this one. We call it as a Oracle restart that is with ASM like single server with ASM and storage is your ASM. So I have one more server. Let's quickly connect on that. If I not connected here. Let's bring it over here. I don't know if the server is up or not. Let's quickly connect. Right, so this is Oracle Lab 2. Let's go back here. Oracle Lab 2, when I do PS-EF, grep smon, and here I have ASM. It's just a plus ASM, not ASM one or two. In case of rack, you have this plus ASM one and you have this second node plus ASM two. If I go here, second node, you have plus ASM two, two node rack. But whereas here, it's a plus ASM. I don't know whether I have database running here. Let's quickly start the database. I don't have a database. Okay, um, let's quickly check it out if I have a database. I'll explain this to ASM CMD in a minute. Okay, I don't have a database. Okay, I don't have a database. Right, so this is your Oracle Lab 2. PSF and F grep S1. If I create a database here on this particular lab two, 
that will be like for example oracle lab 2 if i create assuming that i'm going to create test db here that test db database is going to reside under esm you can install asm software not a cluster software it's just asm software on only one node right now you can see here plus asm on this particular oracle lab 2 you install your asm software only on node 1 and then you can create a database and all the database data files are going to reside under this data reco and ocr whatever we saw here all the data files for the rag database how they are going under asm storage similarly on this oracle lab 2 which if you create your test db all the data files go under this reco and ocr so that is your standalone we call it as a oracle restart and your database will be stored under asm storage and single server single server both are single server one is standalone single server standalone single server one is without asm and one is with asm so without asm we call it as a just a standalone with asm we call it as a oracle restart why oracle restart if that database is killed automatically asm will restart the database and in this particular lab one if some network issue happened or some os issue happens if your database is dropped or if your database not dropped if your database is killed your database is went down i killed here this particular process i killed kill minus 9 your database process is got killed here right your db is down your instance is down manually you have to start your database or manually you start your instance here manually connect back to sql plus assist dba you're going to connect to idle instance and you have to manually start it so that is your inability to start the database automatically when you have this standalone database without asm that's a single server without asm and database is under file system right here these are your file system so here if anything goes wrong with your database like due to network issue or due to os issue your instance or database is killed or went down as a dba manually i need to connect sql plus assist dba i need to manually start the database that is the one of the drawback of standalone but with the standalone oracle restart why oracle restart because we are using asm there single server with asm storage is your asm storage that is your oracle lab 2 whatever this oracle lab 2 you are seeing here we have asm here and we have this asm storage if i create a database on this asm storage assuming that i have created this test db if this database goes down due to some network issue or due to some os issue and this particular asm instance will automatically brings up the test db database will be automatically back online you no need to manually bring it up that is called oracle restart even though it's a single server even though it's a single server in case of without asm if the db is down manually dba has to start it with oracle restart where your asm is running you no need to start them automatically your asm will take care of that if the db goes down asm will bring it up automatically that's where we call it as a oracle restart right that's a single difference between standalone and oracle restart and the third type of database is rack database rack database we just now saw in lab one and lab two right this node one and node two host node one and this host node two you have your orcl one and orcl two and your database is deciding under asm storage and advantage of this rack is same concept if this instance is goes down automatically asm will bring it up so let's do it here psf and ef grep s1 so this is my instance assuming that this instance goes down 
so I killed it. PSF and F grep S mon. My I have only ASM now. My database went down. Database instance went down here. And if I wait for a few seconds, automatically my database will back online. Who is gonna responsible for bringing that back online? See, it is back online now. ASM is responsible for bringing that back online. The same concept goes for your standalone with restart. Even if you kill or your database instance goes down due to some network or OS issue, whatever that ASM instance running, that ASM will bring that database up. Same concept for rack. Both the nodes, if you have two node, four node rack, all the nodes, any instance goes down, ASM will bring it up. And along with that, high availability. Here, the main concept is HA, high availability. In case of here, Oracle restart, it's a single node. If the DB instance goes down, all the user connections will be killed. And ASM will bring it back online, but all the user has to reconnect again. If there's a thousand users are connected, your instance goes down and all the thousand users are killed. And ASM will bring that database back online, but all those thousand users has to reconnect again. That is very bad. How to handle that one? Using this rack. You have node one and node two. Node one, thousand users are connected. If that instance goes down, all the thousand users, whatever connected to node one, automatically shifted to node two. That is your HA, high availability. That's where we talked here. If any of those users who are connected over here, if there's a thousand users connected, and if this instance goes down, and all these thousand user connections are not killed, automatically they will be rerouted to other instances in case of rack. And later your ASM will bring that back online, and whatever the new users will come and connect back to that instance. So, just before slide, just show me one. What, which slide? Before one, sir. A seven, seven slide. Yes, is here rack servers will be n is there. There is no servers in rack. Where is that? In rack column, servers is no. Rack column, okay. Uh, servers, servers row. Okay. N, N yeah. number, N stands for N number. No limit. You can have one node, two node, three node, four node, eight node. I said 64 nodes for one of the client. N means not no, it's a number of nodes. Oh, okay. Number of servers. Okay. You can have 10, 20, 30. Right. So, standalone and rack. Both are having that restart feature. If the instance goes down due to some network issue or OS issue, automatically ASM will bring that back online. Just example I showed here. I killed my database instance, ORCL1, 10319. I killed that one. Within few seconds, ASM brought that instance back online. And what happens to that connected users? HA, high availability all those thousand users will be reconnected to other existing cluster nodes. That's your high availability HA future in rack. Using that TFA, transparent application failover, all the users will be rerouted to the other nodes. Right? That's one future. In over the Oracle restart, it is does not have HA future. If the thousand users are connected, all those will be killed. They have to reconnect again. Whereas in case of rack, all those thousand users, you know, though instance went down, will be automatically rerouted those connection to other nodes. They no need to reconnect again, right? That is the one of the difference between standalone with Oracle restart and your rack, right? One more last type of database is your rack one node. What is this rack one node? The same name suggests here, type of database is rack, but it's a rack one node. Rack one node in the sense, it will run in any one of the rack 
cluster it will not run on all the rack cluster in case of here in rack what happens we have two nodes and we have orcl1 here running here and we have orcl2 running here right and the concept remains same here it is a, not a single server it's a multiple server multiple server with asm and asm storage that's your rack and in the rack here it has same ha future and it has multiple server with asm okay ha i can just remove that one multiple server with asm and asm storage and in case of rack one node any one instance will run at any given time so the future of this rack one node is even though it's a rack cluster and the database instances are across all the nodes but at any given time only one instance will run and for example i want to show that one here <laughs> right so if i go here i have this node one let's say i have this node one and i have this other node here i have this node two here i have multiple databases were installed here i'll just do ps f and f grep uh, smon and i'm not talking about any of this the multiple database were running here and if the same command i ran it on the other server here and if you observe this one rack 1 underscore 2 this database instance is not there in this particular node one here node one i don't have that one if i grab for only this one rack 1n i don't see anything here if i run the same rack 1n on the other node here right i have so many things here underscore 2 underscore 2 and pmon smon lot of background processes so what that indicates here rack 1 underscore 1 underscore 2 node 1 i have instance 1 node 2 i have instance 2 but at any given point of time only one instance will run so if this right now rack 1n 2 is running and in this one here rack 1n underscore 2 is running and on node 1 it is not running node 1 i don't see that one if i connect to that database rack 1n underscore 1 and i use srvctl config database hyphen d rack 1n so if i use this command i'll put that command here config database will give more details about the database properties this is the database unique name is rack 1n and your oracle home your oracle owner your sp file password file and your other details and your disk groups are data and reco what i'm interested is the candidate server node 1 node 2 it's a two node and database instances it is only node 2 
second instance is running the moment second instance is down automatically instance one will run on node one and if you see this type of database it's a rack one node and the same thing for this one your prod dbr your rack 12c1 if i check this 12c1 and on the other node 12c2 second instance your rack 12c2 if i connect and run dot or inv and set for this 12c2 and if i run the same command srhtl config for this rack 12c2 and same thing your database name oracle home and sp file password file and your name of the database type of the database here automatic and your database instances and type is rack the type of the database is either rack one node or your rack right so that is your different types of database even though it's a rack cluster but at any given point of time only one instance will be running so in order to make it quick simpler you have standalone and standalone and i can say this is standalone in case of standalone you have dev db and all your data files are running under fs the file system right and you have oracle restart again that is also standalone where you are running plus asm and your test db will be running over here and your file system storage for your dev db depending upon your storage admin whereas in oracle restart again standalone where you install the asm and your test db database is stored under asm storage so where we don't need of depending on the storage admin we dba can manage the storage that's a simple understanding between standalone and restart and now talk about rack versus rack one node right this is the rack one in the rack one we have plus asm one and we have ORCL one and asm storage same thing we have asm2 my instance 2 will be running and storage will be asm storage but whereas rack one node what happens the same concept i have asm1 and here instead of orcl i will be having orcl underscore one and asm storage and here it will be orcl2 and asm storage this is your rack one node but in rack one node either orcl underscore one will be running or orcl2 will be running if orcl1 is running and this will be down and if this orcl1 is goes down by any network issue or os issue automatically orcl2 will get started that is the in meaning of rack one node even though it's a rack cluster database but only one instance will be up and running at any given point of time it is just to limit the resource usage so for example i have a two nodes here i should not run my instances on both the nodes because it's a resource consuming i don't want any of the resource to be run on node one what client will do they will only start the instance to and they will run it 
So report maybe reporting. They are using this rack one node for reporting. Only they will run it on one node. So this will be instance two. Sorry, the typo. And it will be running on only one node. And they will run all the reports from the second node. And they don't want to run it from the node one because node one they are using it for some production use. And they don't want to start this rack one node on the node one. So they will start it on only node two for reporting or some backup or some other connectivities. Right? That's a rack one node. All right. Any questions on these four types of databases? Malik, there is no separate rack node, right? So all the rack and rack node will be running on the same instance, correct? Right. Rack and rack one node are your cluster, two node cluster, four node cluster, eight node cluster. And you can configure what type of database you want. You want either rack or you want either rack one node. Okay. Thank you. All right. Right. So that's about a different types of a databases. What you can see it here. That's what I mentioned in this particular slide. Standalone, the storage is local storage. And Oracle restart storage is your ASM disk group and rack one node and rack again storage is your ASM servers in standalone and Oracle restart is a single server one and in case of rack one node and rack it's a n number no limit you can have two node four node eight node whatever it is n number and ASM needed in case of standalone no need of ASM and in case of Oracle restart yes you need ASM that will be just plus ASM. And in case of rack one node and rack, it will be like ASM is needed. It will be ASM one, ASM two, ASM three, ASM four like that. Here also same ASM one, ASM two, ASM three, ASM four. And number of instances in standalone only one. In Oracle restart again, that's only one because both are single nodes. In case of rack and rack one node, in case of rack one node, Number of instances only one. Remember, rack one node is any given point of time, only one instance will be running. And in case of rack, it's an number. You can start two node, three node, three, four node, eight nodes. Well, it's left to you that multiple instances will be running. Here it's only one instance. And instance name like prod CDB. And here also it's a prod CDB. And in rack one node, it will be prod CDB underscore one, underscore two, underscore three. That's a one node concept underscore we can use here. And in case of rack, it will be prod CDB. The prefix will be like one, two, three, four, like ORCL one, ORCL two, ORCL three. That's a naming convention. Auto restart, automatically restart of your instance. In standalone, no, we don't support that. But in case of standalone with the restart, yes, automatically your database instance will be restarted whenever it is got killed. In rack one node and rack automatically restarted. These are like features or the advantages of different types of rack, different types of databases with pros and cons. All right, uh, let's stop it for now. I'm gonna pause it here. Uh, I'm gonna stop it for today. We'll continue further with the uh, remaining rack architecture network and the cluster startup sequence. We just talked about standalone versus rack and different types of uh, instances. We'll probably talk tomorrow about rack and networking and this the file system for your rack. Right, let's give it for one or two minutes if anyone has any questions before we stop it for today. So Malik, so for the auto restart, for rack one node, yeah, it's automatic. Yeah. So if it's suppose if according to the rack one node, just one instance runs, but when it becomes automatic, let me say it, the 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 node goes down and it wants to restart. How is it going to know that? Okay, I have to restart just one node and not all the nodes in the cluster. That's where I just showed you that properties right here. The type of database type of database rack, it means we are gonna start on all the rack nodes. If the type of the database is rack one node, we are gonna start only one node. Like if you see this type of the database here, 
is rack one node. The properties of database is mentioned it's a rack one node. With that, you're gonna say rack one node. This instance is running. If this instance is goes down, automatically the next instance will be started. Which one? We don't have any feature. If it is four node, for example, let's say one, two, three, four. Right now this is running. And if the server goes down or if this instance goes down. And we don't have any control. Either this may run or this may start or this may start. Anyone will start in the four node rack cluster. Right. All right. Any more questions, guys, before we stop it? All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sorry to interrupting you. Uh, do you have any plans on uh, exit data sessions? No. Hi, Malik. Uh, do we get uh, access to lab? No. We no. again, as I said, again, the, very I said the very beginning. It'll be on your own laptop. If you join a little late, just uh, go back. I'm gonna save this recordings. The lab will be done on your individual laptop and this is the prerequisites what we just discussed you should have a minimum 16 gb ram and 100 gb ssd hard disk and we're going to set up a lab on your laptop and you'll be using a lab with your own laptop we don't have any online labs sir now your voice is very much clear did, <laughs> did you bring your mic closer to your no, as I said, it's a issue with your whatever the headphone or or your speaker. It was fine for everyone. Uh, Malik, the DNS string for the database fails. It fails with failed to resolve name. What would be the issue? No, we will we'll discuss it offline. Okay. All right. Any more questions, guys? on the so far whatever the course discussion or the course content or the whatever the topics we are we discussed so far all right i will take it as a no uh, let's connect tomorrow for the further discussion we'll continue with the few more concept rack architecture networking and your crd files and some of the installation types. All right. Thank you, and let's see you in tomorrow's class. Thank you, sir.